Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to cover uh, the bending stresses in uh, welded joints. So just to sort of uh, recap from last time is how do you calculate, first of all, uh, the torsion stresses in welded joints? And that was uh, pretty simple. Let's say you have, now let's say you have a beam and here, for example, you could have a wall. If I have a force applied and I basically have some weld applied on this beam, uh, how can I find, for example, the stresses at this element, right? So that is a beam in torsion. Like I mentioned last time, the first step that you have to do is you have to identify the centroid of the weld. If the weld is like this, come on, redraw this. This is your weld. This is going to be your centroid. And you're going to map this force and then use it as a moment at the centroid. And let's say that whole distance is L. It means that you have this moment, which is equal to F times L. And the moment and the force are going to, and I would actually put the force. Let me put the force as well. So this moment and then this force are going to create primary and secondary shearing on the weld, right? Which is, uh, uh, which is drawn here as a single line, right? Um, so if I was considering that point, that point is gonna have primary shearing, right? So the primary shearing tau prime is gonna be equal to the force divided by the area. And the area here is a throat area of this whole line. And in that case, it's gonna be F divided by, so the area of the weld, so to get the area of the weld, all you have to do is just multiply the length of the weld by uh, 0.707, multiplied by the throat, which is H. So this guy is gonna be 0 0.707 H multiplied by this length. So I'm gonna actually make this guy equal to D by D. So this is your primary and then your secondary as a result of this moment, you are going to have this tau double dot and tau double dot is gonna be equal to MC over J where you can look up J from, um, where J is gonna be equal to 0.707 H times JU. So 707H times JU. Okay, so let me just uh, go back to our presentation and then quickly describe that. Uh, all right. So Okay, so this is our table. And in the case of a line weld, like the one that I have here, so the line weld is gonna give you a throat area. It will give you the location of the center of gravity, which in this case is at half the line. And it will also give you your polar moment of area, right? Or second polar moment of area. If this weld, was actually continued over. And then if it was like this, then again, you will be also, you will, you will be also be able to look at the table and find the JU for this guy and find A for this guy. And then also you should be able to find the stresses at any point that you desire along this line, right? So I'm going to again, come back to this table. And then in the case of this guy, then you have this L shape and the D and the P, uh, they could have different lengths. And this could be the weld, for example. And then the area is gonna be the throat area. Uh, we can get JU based on this. And uh, you can get J and you can find the stresses at any point and it's pretty straightforward. All right, so uh, that is it regarding the torsion stresses in, in welds. Now let us actually go over the bearing stresses in welded joints. So in the case of bending in welded joints, basically the weld, they would have to occur on the same plane away from the force. So if the weld is here and you are going to have another weld over here, so it means you have, this is not in torsion, this is in bending. And how do you know if it's bending or torsion? If the stress basically was located in the same plane, like in this case, then it would be, so you have welding on top, welding on bottom, you can find your, uh, um, 
moment of inertia for this guy and from here essentially you can find your uh, your bending stresses all right so the approach here is very similar to the torsion and uh, you are going to have a shearing which is v over a right so i'm going to draw this again let's say this is your beam and that is a wall. So if you actually choose to put the weld like this and here like that, you are going to have uh, on the weld, you are basically going to have a shear, right? So essentially the, the active areas are here and then here. So if we were actually looking at the areas which are basically under stress are going to be those two. Right, this guy and this guy, right? And uh, here, what you are going to have is you are going to have on these, you are going to have this tau prime. Uh, let me just stop. Okay, so you are going to have basically tau prime applied on this and that, and you are going to have a secondary shearing. So in this case, tau prime is going to be equal to the shear force divided by the area and you are going to have a typical bending stress that is applied here and that bending stress is going to be equal to mc over i how do you find i you have to find i from the table that we have where we already know i is going to be equal to 707 h times iu so there will be a table that you would use to find this iu and you plug it here and then you can find that stress now you have your shear and then your stress. You can basically plot the more circle, right? Remember, so you can actually have this guy and then you can have your shear. Um, you can plot your more circle, right? So here, obviously you have only one state of stress. So you're gonna be here, there, there. You can get your principles. Like this guy could be like sigma one. This guy could be sigma three. You can get your maximum shear, etc. All right, so this is the first theory. First theory is you have your primary shearing, which is applied on this element and then this, right, this section and then that section. And the stress is going to be here V over A, where A is a throat area. Uh, the second stress is going to be your bending stress, and that is MC over I. We know the value of MC or the value of M is going to be equal to. If this guy is F and this guy is L, then the moment is going to be F times L. C is going to be the distance from neutral axis to the point where you are analyzing or basically the weld point, and I is going to be found from that table. So the second theory of this is I'm going to uh, reshare again my screen on this. Okay, the second theory basically tells you that, okay, you're going to keep the primary shearing, but the bending stress essentially you know, the bending stress is, let me reset a little bit. So the bending stress, we know is gonna be acting like this, right? This is your bending, and then your shear is gonna be acting like that, right? Uh, the, there is another theory on welds that tells you that you can basically, this is only for uh, welds which are subject to bending stress. Uh, essentially, you can treat this this bending stress as your secondary shearing, all right? And ultimately, you are going to have one single shearing, which is equal to tau prime square plus uh, sigma square. Don't ask me why this is uh, valid or why they are using it in our book. I know that they are using it, and then this is what you will. This is the other approach of evaluating the stresses inside the one. So the first, the first theory was you find your primary shearing where you use the throat area and then V basically becomes F. And also for this situation, you can find MC over I and you can find that axial stress and I is gonna be equal to this based on your throat area and then the IU that you look up from the table, which I'm gonna show you in a second. So from here, you can find your von Mises, for example, because you have sigma and then you have tau prime. So your sigma prime is gonna be equal to 
sigma squared plus three tau squared. And then you take that to a safety factor theory. The other approach is you assume your axial stress is basically equivalent to your shear because essentially it's trying to shear the weld at the bottom, right? And you have, this is your, your secondary shearing becomes, and then this is your primary shearing, and then you can do this, and then you can get that shear. All right, what we are going to be using in, 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 in the exam, uh, if we actually use this, we are going to be dealing with this. So you're gonna get tau prime, and then you're gonna get sigma, and then you're gonna use a lookup table to find your i, um, and that's it. Uh, let me, all right. So now let's look at the bending and let me just stop this video that I have. Okay. So here we have the various types of welding. And here again, this is obviously the throat area is not gonna change, but the second moment of area basically will change. So IU right now is equal to D cube over 12. If you wanna find I, you have to multiply this guy by 0 0.707, 0 0.707 multiplied by h. And you have all these different configurations that you could use. All right, let us do an example on that. And here what we have is we have a cantilever beam made of AISI 1018 hot rolled steel and is welded on a, uh, is welded using a 3 8 fillet weld. So we have a 3 8 fillet weld. We need to find a safety factor for the weld. So how do you calculate the safety factor? So to calculate the safety factor, first of all, you have to find the allowable stress, and then you have to find the actual stress, and then divide the allowable by the actual. So we have this 500. Uh, it's gonna result in a moment, which is 500 pound force times six inches. So we got 3,000 pound inch force applied on, moment applied on these two sections. So if I actually draw these, they are going to look like that in that plane. Uh, so here, basically these two, I'm gonna basically see one, and then I'm gonna see one, right? And these are the two welds, right? One weld on the left, one weld on the right, and they are in the same plane, basically they are equally away from the force, right? Meaning essentially here bending stress apply, not torsion. If one of them was here and the other is here, then yes, then you can say this one is in torsion, right? But because they are equally away from the force, then you can treat it like that. Now you wanna find the area. The area is gonna be equal to how much to this lens, two, right? Multiplied by, uh, so we have weld on both ends, right? So uh, the area is gonna be equal to uh, two, right? Multiplied by the three A's, right, multiplied by 0 0.707, and then they are multiplying it by two because you have welds on both ends, right? That is why they have the 1.14, right? So this is essentially two times 0 0.707 times H times D, right? Essentially, you're getting the whole length of the weld. So that is the throat area. To get your primary shearing, you divide simply this load by the total area, or you could do it the other way where you take only half of the force and then you evaluate only one weld line, right? So this is our primary shearing, our secondary, uh, 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 our basically uh, uh, bending stress is equal to MC over I. And I know M is equal to 500 times C divided by I. Uh, what is our moment? Our moment is 500 multiplied by six, right? Which is 3000. Uh, C is one inch, so we have two inches in total. So we're gonna have only one inch. So we're considering this element right here. Taking on this element, uh, I is equal to 0.707 H times IU. I know that IU is equal to D cube over six. Why is it equal to D cube over six? Let us actually come back here. Uh, there you go, right? So D cube over six is right here, right? So this is two lines. So you cannot take only one, right? And then reanalyze these. You actually have to take both of them. And we know the distance between them is equal to how much uh, one eighth, right? But the distance between them doesn't actually matter when you are looking at the bending, right? Uh, or this, you know, uh, second moment of area, right? So this doesn't actually include that value B here, right? It's only included when you are finding the location of G, which we don't use, by the way, in, in this case. Okay, so uh, that is it. Uh, so you get your sigma, 
and this is going to be your your sigma so that is our sigma which is applied on this red dot uh, now if i want to uh, let me see okay so this is uh, the first theory right so here that's it we calculate our uh, bending stress on the weld and then we calculate our primary shearing so from here what we can do is we can use the von Mises. so we have sigma x and then we have our tau so this is what we're doing so we have 471 for shear 8485 for bending uh, we use the von Mises, and then we get our sigma prime which is equal to this okay the other method is so by the way for this method we're getting a safety factor of 3.75 in the other method basically we have uh we assume that this guy right uh, the bending is actually shear right and uh, in that case we are basically we're basically using pythagorean and then summing those two shears together and we're assuming this is more like a torsion problem right uh, because your primary and your secondary becomes perpendicular and you can find that total shear magnitude and you can now use a safety factor uh, you can use this guy which is basically uh, sy over square root of three right which is again your one minus so we we already went through that in the case of a pure shearing if you are analyzing things in static based on the von Mises, then you take uh, this guy is going to be a square root of three times um, times uh, tau, right? Which is one over square root of three, which is zero point five seven seven. So from here, again, you can find that safety factor. All right, guys. Uh, so uh, that is what we are doing here, and then here what we are really calculating. We are calculating uh, here sigma on the bar is equal to uh, sy on the electrode essentially here what we are calculating is simply the the stress on the weld and not on the part right and uh, when you are calculating here uh, that sigma y we are using it the same in uh, both cases right we are using it for steel and we are using steel assuming the failure of steel is the same as the failure of the electrode which is basically the weld material this is what they mean by that because we are using this sy say to ksi uh which is for aisi 10 18 hot road okay guys so uh, there are a couple of problems uh, on welding uh, that uh, i recommend you go through uh, in the assignments and uh, with this i think you should uh, be enough uh, for analyzing welds again the key takeaway here is that you have to look up at the table use a table find the bending stress on the weld or find the torsion on the weld and uh, from the torsion on the weld you can find primary shearing secondary shearing and uh, and you, should, you would be able to find that at any element along the weld. 